Scowling, a sales clerk shakes his head. No, but Pat, her steel tempered with honey, insists. We have an appointment with a manager, she gyrates. And we're already a little late, please. She wheedles, please, please. When the door opens, she gives his hand a squeeze. A moment later, they are waiting in a sea of leather sofas, all indigo blue. Truth is the consequences, Pat dogmatizes, especially of lies. We're here, she insists, impatient with Ellen's troubled look, right where we should be on top of the food chain. Here, with all international, Ellen snorts as Pat surges on. Stop it, Ellen, Pat says. Stop being a nincompoop. In a minute, the doors will open and those bitches out there will tear the place apart. If we're not on our toes, Elle, we'll miss out on the one marvelous thing. They are surrounded by recliners, and because Ellen continues to look unconvinced, Pat assures her, there is always one marvelous thing. A low roar swells and overtakes them. All at once, wormwood is thick and fast with women, some piloting, anxious-looking infants on wheels. Shit, Pat snarls. They are making their way around archipelagos of Welsh coffee tables. Fuck them, she says. Fuck that. And she bolts. What is it, Ellen calls after. What's wrong? Pat is taken off in a dead heat towards a faux antique Roman birdcage over six feet high. Butter yellow and well greased with gold leaf, it glitters. Beside it, a clerk with a nervous disorder fumbles with a credit card. You can't have that, Pat shouts at a startled brunette, handsome and dappled with freckles. Sorry, but the cage is ours. Take a look, she tells the clerk. It has a hole ticket on it. Swimming in his red jacket, the geriatric clerk appears dazed. There was, the brunette speaks evenly, no hold on this. Ellen thinks she is lovely with an open, ironical face. Yes, there was, Pat lies breezily. I put a hold on it last night for all international. You can take your all international, the woman says kindly, and shove it, you and your wimpy sidekick. Mortified, Ellen cringes. She likes the other woman likes her bangs, her hazel eyes, her freckles, and her spunk. I am a wimp, she thinks, or I wouldn't be here tagging along with Pat. She looks into the woman's face and smiles. What's all international anyway, the woman asks her, almost tenderly. I doubt it's real. Leaning close to Ellen, she whispers, I don't think your friend is either. <laughs> she isn't, Ellen returns her whisper. Give her back her credit card, Pat directs the old codger. Do it. I'm Magda, the woman tells Ellen, and thrillingly touches her wrist there where the pulse quickens. I'm waiting, Pat says, beginning to look scary, for you to give her back her card. Stop clutching it, for God's sakes. You are being abused, Magda tells the clerk, by a mythomaniac. Don't let yourself be pushed around like that, a man your age. Ellen thinks the clerk must be 80 at least. Like so many elderly Americans forced into servitude, he is stuck together with denture glue and surgical bolts. <laughs> he has recently recovered from a hip replacement he could not afford. He cannot recall who saw the cage first. He can barely remember his own name. <laughs> Hugo, Pat says, reading his breast pocket. You remember me. I came in last night before closing and told you to put a hold on the birdcage. You remember me, Hugo. Hugo considers this. Hugo is, after all, his name. Yet he is frightened. His hands are shaking. Don't let her persecute you, Ellen says. Fuck you, Pat shouts. Fuck you, Ellen, fucking traitor. I have birds, Magda tells him. Thirty Australian zebra finches. Each one has a name. And when one begins to sing, all the others join in. Zebra finches sing in syncopation. They've been doing so for tens of thousands of years. My birds will find their happiness in this cage. But only if you say so, Hugo. It's up to you. The clerk studies the bird cage with real intensity. This woman, she'll make a phone booth out of it, a urinal, who knows what. Please, Hugo, be kind. Process my card. Screw her, Hugo, Pat explodes. The sentimental twat, screw her, goddammit. <coughs> hey, says Hugo. 
Pat presses her card upon him, but he pulls himself together, straightening his jacket and balancing on his elevator shoes. Now, now, he offers. An ancient fire is stirring in Hugo's hollow chest. In his distant youth, he was a missionary and once convinced a headhunter to embrace the greater power. He begins to process Magda's card. Hugo, says Pat, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm a Mormon, Hugo says this with dignity. <laughs> what? Pat barks, now totally out of control. What the fuck does that have to do with this transaction? I'll tell you what this has to do with this transaction. Not a fucking thing. <laughs> I'm a Mormon, Hugo repeats, his teeth all a rattle. And I am offended by your manner, ma'am. My name is Hugo, he tells Magda, who nods and signs the receipt. Shit, says Pat. Fuck this. Stomping off, she leaves a stench of sulfur and white diamonds in her wake. Fuck you, Ellen, she shouts as she eclipses. I'll never take you shopping again. Later that evening, as they lie together, sweetly entwined, Ellen asks Magda where her birds are. What birds, pussycat? Magda yawns and languorous stretches. The finches, Ellen says. The 30 synchronized finches. I have no finches, Magda tells her. What's the cage for then? Ellen laughs, heartily amused. For you, little one, Magda says, taking Ellen's lower lip between her teeth gently, to curl up at in at your leisure like a cat, like a cat that has eaten up all the little birds one by one, their feathers, their feet, their tiny skulls. Yes, Ellen purrs for approval, and each and every one of those birds is named Pat. <laughs> Thank you.